and uh, I know that I wanted to step back uh, as we wrap up Canboard, you know, because because we've covered a lot, we've covered a lot. Uh, so I wanted to to take a step back and do a Q and A session. So let's let's go through uh, this this Q and R. This will be the substitute for our uh, integration discussion and uh jack i will let you lead it however you want so if you want me to ask you questions or if you want to ask me questions go for it okay i'm gonna go ahead and ask you questions i put together let's see here about 12 and they're they're kind of easy some of them have one word answers. some of them have two word answers you can elaborate as much as you want or as little as you want and i know i had put out something to the podcast feed asking uh, for q a and i put that out really late i didn't see any responses trickle in if anyone out there does have any additional questions it's not like this is the end of us ever talking about camp board ever so if if you if something if this sparks a question for your for anyone out there or if you just run across something in your day-to-day -day, feel free to reach out and and we're more than happy to to help out uh, with with this stuff i mean this is this is what we do all right what is the best plugin I would say the calendar one. Uh, I would say the calendar one simply because I think it gives me it, – it's it's great to have that separate tab. It gives it an air of professionalism. It gives Camboard an air of professionalism that comes with having that built right in, especially if I want to see what is going on in my day. Now, it does have an iCal feed that I export to my phone, so it's not like I would be without that. However, it is probably the first thing I install uh, on a Camboard instance. Okay, I I'm going in a different direction with that one. I'm going Nebula. I'm going with a theme. I don't know if that is anti-productivity or what. I'm going with a theme, man. That, that, that way I'm able to log in and go, all right, I can actually look at this. Well, and, and that's a good point too, especially since you're logging into the browser via your, your mobile device. So like on my desktop, yeah, I have Dark Reader, um, and we'll we'll actually get into that later. But that's gonna give me a default dark theme on all the web pages. But Nebula being specifically crafted for Canboard, it's a little bit more polished. Does Calend does Canboard work with my existing calendar? So you said you, you said you have iCal, right? I did put that up there. Yeah, uh, Canboard by default has the option to export iCal feeds. Uh, I think. They are only either public or not available. Uh, I'd have to double check. I know that I actually subscribe to it via Nextcloud and then aggregate all of my calendars in Nextcloud. And that's what's actually being displayed on my phone. But the, yeah, the, the iCal is available through through Canboard. And, and that's something that can work with Google Calendar, that can look, work with Outlook, that can work with, you know, any anywhere you have your calendar, right? All you would do is import the, the Canboard feed uh, in order to work with that. So that's one of those features you're like, well, I'm using a board system. Why do I need a calendar, right? All the purists out there would say, why do I need a calendar? It's like, well, you have due dates for stuff. You live in the, we live in a society. You're going to have due dates for stuff. Um, and, and something I've been playing around a little bit more with is like the uh, the start date and, and the due date. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't even think about setting start dates and configuring those with, I guess, lining them up with calendar. You could also do where you have a subtask due date and like your subtask would be to read the next chapter in the book. And then you would go to the study the next day and then the global due date for that task would be that friday due date there's there's different ways to do it um and honestly that's that's what i love about camboard it is so bare bones that there's whatever works like especially when it comes to your calendar system it's like whatever works for that and you know there's there's other things i want to do to the calendar too the one drawback for the calendar which i've actually started taking a look into is that it does not produce events that alert by default so you would actually have to go in individually wherever your calendar is and flick whatever task is is there to alert and it yeah enable the alert on the task and i would like to do something because the iCal specification has a way where you can specify hey this should be an alert 30 minutes before the activity or something like that and that would 
go along with the event into the calendar software that you use so that whatever calendar alert notification you have, that would pop up as an alert rather than just sitting in the background on your calendar without an alert. Uh, so that's something I've been playing around with. Um, but I think I think the calendar is an integral feature of any productivity software because calendars have been used ever since we've been tracking time. Definitely. I, I'd agree. I think that you need a calendar. You need some kind of calendar integration. What is the best way to track productivity on Camboard? Would you say complexity? That's another one of yours. So I think, I think the hard thing, especially – with tasks complete, if we want to start there, I mean, that, that would be the very first thing. Honestly, if you don't have any metrics, start there. Once, once you start getting feedback or, or, or hearing that little voice in the back of your head saying, well, that one task was actually really big. You got to stop yourself immediately and say, what do I mean by big? And that's, it's very hard to quantify. Not only is it hard to quantify, it's harder to quantify up front. Uh, and, and you and I kind of give, estimations you know in in complexity but i think any kind of analytics should be generating statistics based on behavior not based on guesses or estimations so if if you're going to be computing some type of statistic for for long term or or you want it to be the holy grail of statistics you're going to have to measure something that naturally happens so, for instance, one thing that I'm doing, trying out at, at work, is I'm going to be tracking time where the task is active. And by active, I mean has been commented on, moved, or updated somehow in the past like day and a half or, or three days. And then if that's happened, then I know that at least someone's looking into it and writing notes or or doing something on it moving it back to waiting or moving it back to in progress because something's happening on it you know they they're actually touching that task you know they they I've started to I've started to refer to uh at work jira I've started to refer to it as like my zen rock garden where I just keep I keep moving stuff around and smoothing out the boards and you know it's it's a daily kind of level set for myself just to kind of shift everything around and yeah i'm still working on this or if i haven't touched something you know and and i do have a filter currently out there that i'm testing just you know what is a what is a stale task look like you know and a stale task in a, in a different state you know if something's waiting that could probably be waiting for weeks it isn't necessarily going to be stale after a day or two whereas something in progress is absolutely stale if i haven't touched it in a day or two so making that determination and then saying, all right, throughout the life cycle of this task, from, from when it was created to when it was done, how often was it stale, right? And how often was it being worked on? And then you can say, well, if, if there were five days where it was within that, that stale frame of reference, then... You know, you can assign that like a three complexity or something, right? Um, if there's something that was continuously being touched for three weeks straight, then that's that's a really big task. But if so, if it's something that's sat in planning for for forever, and then moved got moved over, worked on immediately, and then reviewed and done all within like a day and a half, that's a very 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 small task. So. Monitoring that on the back end is going to be a lot more effective than monitoring it on the front end. And tracking the productivity that way is going to give you a more natural outcome of, of statistics. But, but the first thing you have to do is start measuring what tasks are getting done. Uh, the second is what do we think is getting done versus what's actually getting done. And, and that's kind of what we're doing with complexity. You know, we say, hey, I think this is going to take me three twentieths of my time over the next two weeks. Right. And because because we aim for for 20 complexity every two weeks. So I, I, I say it's going to take three three twentieths or five twentieths. Right. And and kind of chalk it up there. Uh, the, the good thing about keyboard tasks is I have all that data in there so that when I'm ready to start getting a, a, a more natural approach to gathering those analytics, then I can go in and I can say, hey, I think I want to start measuring complexity versus the stale and and all of those all of those transitions are noted. So like I can tell you exactly when the task moved from one column to another 
I can tell you exactly when the complexity was updated uh, or, or, or downgraded. I can tell you exactly when a comment was made. So I can start tracking those, assigning whatever kind of arbitrary boundaries that I want between stale and not stale. And then we start looking into, you know, all right, how much actual work was put into this task? And, and that's why I'm a big proponent of make sure, you know, if you, if you want to track hours, then log your hours there. If you want to track state, then make sure you put a comment in there updating on, you know, what you did that day or, or, or jotting down some notes. Just always be in those tasks. Be, be in them. Like, let them, let them guide your workflow. Here's one for you then. Uh, I have another question that's on the, bo- on the list here. Is Camboard a good way to document work as compared to like a knowledge base? Like for documentation and for, you know, attaching PDFs and for what have you. Basically comparing it to a knowledge base. Because I could see it going both ways. Rule of thumb, no. Uh, Camboard is not a documentation silo. That needs to be, that needs to live somewhere else. Uh, because, it, and and I wouldn't even say, because I was, I was thinking about when you were asking that, I was thinking about, well... Could it be a way to disperse that information among a team? And yeah, if I attached a PDF and told someone to review it, they would review it and look at the PDF. But the thing is, that's not where, where it's documented. That's not what they would refer to. That's not what you need them to be familiar with. You need them to be familiar with the documentation. So if you're going to introduce anyone to a subject matter you want to introduce them to the one canonical place that they're going to go to get their information what do you think the first task that should go in any cam board is I, I, for me this answer was uh set up my cam board i actually i like i like at least coming to the table pre my first task with my columns and swim lanes set up yeah yeah i think it's in and, you know, we received this advice when we started podcasting. I mean, you want to start with a solid 25 episode subjects. Like, you don't want to jump in here and say, well, maybe I could eke two or three of these out and they would be, you know, decent. And, and I'm sure I could have some subject matter that I could cover for maybe 45 minutes. And then I don't know what I do. Right. If you're going to start a podcast, everyone knows that a podcast is going to be like a weekly or biweekly or monthly kind of thing where you're going to be expected to have a have a show with you know similar type content over and over and over again. And obviously it's it's not going to take off immediately. Nothing ever works like that. So you're going to have to put in a lot of effort, you know, to get to that first kind of bit of momentum with boards. I think it's, it's a similar thing. I don't start a board until I have at least like five or six different things I want to throw on there. Uh, and, and sometimes actually, so for example, uh, when so at I, that point, why track them on the board when you can use a list, if it's only five or six, right. Or would you go more than that? Cause at what point do you say, at what point do you say why board and why now? Right. Versus the list. If you have five or six, I, because I just default to the board now. I do default to the board, yeah. But what I don't do is I don't default to creating new boards. So one of my experiences... Okay, okay, right, right. One of my experiences uh, was actually moving in here with my roommate. And and uh, th- obviously it being a house, there's a lot of things that need to get done around it. So I thought I'd set up a new board, kind of throw everything that needed to get done on around the house on there, and set up... a rotation set up automated tasks reoccurrences yada 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 well turns out there's not as much as i thought there was going to be on a weekly or daily or monthly basis so the the small amount of tasks that i actually keep track of for for stuff around the house uh, or, or stuff having to do with you know living here stuff i'm responsible for um, or just laundry, I track on my personal board. So I just, I just leave it, you know, obviously it's not, it's not this, it's not work stuff. It's not other stuff. I, I just, I just track it on my personal board and it, it fits in there just fine. So what I did is I, I went into a, a brand new board having, you know, maybe five or six different tasks, tried it out, found that it wasn't really buying me anything more than I, I already have on the personal board and just kind of threw all those tasks back on the first board 
and closed out the the new one because I I just did not need it. Do you have a default swim lane then in your personal board? Do you have something where you throw under like the miscellaneous task that ends up being whatever it is, you know, whatever kind of comes up? Yeah, I, I actually so I have the same four that we use. I have uh, the emergency, which is you know if I get an email that my credit cards expired or I, you know if I if I if I get an emergency, I throw it on top. Uh, if I have a one-off, like we just had a, uh, uh, men's retreat at work, you know, and that's not something that happens all the time. And it's, you know, something I'd prepare for. So th I threw that in the, the one-off column or one-off swim lane, excuse me. Uh, and then I have my reoccurring swim lane and then I have my project slash improvement swim lane at the bottom. So it's, it's the exact same setup that you and I are working with. Uh, I, I, I feel that that has been far and away the most flexible setup uh, that I've ever adopted. Obviously, it's it's very general, and some of what I've been doing could benefit from more specifically tuned board structures. Yeah, but I don't I don't think once again I think the return on investment for me to create another board is just really not there for me to spend all the time and effort. You know. That would be another iCal that I'd have to sync to Nextcloud, you know. And so, so there's there's just a lot that that goes into maintaining that board. So I figure, hey, it's it's fine as it is. It's I'm getting it done, and that's that's what I'm tracking too. If if I'm sitting there and something's just not getting done, and I I can identify that, then yeah, that something needs to change. But if if tasks continue to get done, and I'm able to track those and and see a you know, keep maintaining that forward momentum. I'm not going to fix something that's not broken. With that, I don't have any more questions. I, don't, I think we covered the majority of them that are out there. The third one that I jotted down here, you mentioned the why, why not default to a list at six tasks. And, yeah. And, and that you would default to a board. What would be the rationale for tracking your tasks using a board instead of a list? It helps you track state where stuff is, you know, am I waiting on something else to complete before I can do this? Is this something I'm working on actively right now? Or is this something that I need, you know, kind of need to do? And it, it, it breaks down to actually those three, those three columns. It's to do, doing, and done. It's hard for me to track state with a list. So what happens for me and why I don't use lists is actually that if I create a list, what will happen is... I'll end up with more tasks and create a different list with more tasks on the second list than the first one. And the first one will have about four things, you know, say the list is the first list is eight items long. I'll cross four off and then I'll have four left to go. And then instead of referring back to the new list and creating more on that first list, what I'll do is I'll just create a new list and go to my second list because I couldn't complete the four on my first list and I'll knock off, you know, chip away at the easy tasks and then the long long lead time items I end up either not coming back to or I scrap the list or it's I never end up following up is what happens with that the to-do list at least for me so having it on the board you know I'm at least able to say this is this is right here for now this is waiting for now this is basically I, I'm able to track it better no that that state is very important I'm wondering how your tasks get on your board since you were you were talking about uh, you have one list that turns into another list and you keep rearranging these lists and, and adding new things to the list how how do you have new things that get onto your board how do you how do you have new tasks usually if i see uh shoot even youtube videos and anything that i think would benefit from me either coming back to that i don't have time to immediately complete I, I don't know. I think it was you that mentioned this once at one point in time. If it's a two minute task, I'll usually just do it. If it's something that's going to take me 20 minutes or longer, I'll create a task for it. I usually, if it's longer than 20 minutes, I, I don't have too many things that are longer than 20 minutes. Uh, or shoot, you know, it's not like I'm spending days or weeks. Um, I'll create like a, a retreat would be a good, good example of that. I'd create a task for it, but it's obviously it's going to break down in a way more than, it, it, it's a couple days either way there's a task out there for it. anything longer than two minutes is essentially going to get a task if i can do it in two minutes it's going to be i'm going to do it i'm going to sit down and do it right now just spitballing scenarios here and i'm sure i'm going to come up with the several several so like say you're you're in a meeting right and you're just 
you're spitballing ideas with people. You know, how, how do you capture that output of the meeting? I try to go notes through the meeting. And then, it, well, it's for work, at least, I'll, I'll go notes through the meeting. And then after, if there are action items, I'll take the action items and go task. But for you and me, oddly enough, I do it a little bit differently with you and me. If we're sitting there spitballing, I'll actually just go to a task because you're pretty good about saying, hey, let's, we need a task for this. We just default to, hey, go make a task rather than coming back to it at the end and saying, all right, what do we need? You know, what do we need to create a task for? And, and actually, I think both approaches are valid. Um, also, I like to default when I'm in a meeting to having a task that is relevant to that meeting. So, for instance, if I'm in one of my one of our weekly project meetings, right, we have a task for that. I have at work, I have actually one task per project that just kind of hangs out there in a separate state, a separate board. Separate, you know, we track projects there. I don't expect them to, move, I expect them to stay there for months, right? But I expect all my notes to be there. So I can go back and, you know, what project am I working on? Okay, this is my, you know, this project. So I pull up that one and then I'll make notes in there from all my meetings. You'll see all of my meetings have notes and I can refer back to, oh yeah, two weeks ago we told, you know, someone, to to take a look into this and there was an outcome and then this task was created so i can go back in my notes through that that one overarching project and then all of the tasks themselves are, are linked to that project uh, so that's what i that's where i like to keep my notes and then tasks as an action item come out of that but i think i think meetings are interesting in that they do require you to have either the discipline to sit back and say yes that's something we should consider and make it as a task or we're just spitballing here let's circle back to it later but put it as a comment in what we're working on that that for me is interesting um another scenario right you're walking around the grocery store and you have an idea for a YouTube video that you want to look up when you get home. What do you do? Write it down because I know I'll forget it by the time I get home. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what if it's what if it's a bigger project? So I'll write it in just notes, as crazy as that sounds. And then I'll come home and do a manual transfer. No, I don't let that get unwieldy because it's very easy to just say, all right, I operated out of notes. It's like, no, you, you can't. You can't have a to-do list out of notes, and you should absolutely not have a to-do list out of your inbox. Those are my two no-nos right there, right there. And that's 99% of the people that I've encountered because that's just the first thing that comes to mind is I get email and I take notes. So that's how I should do my work. And it's like, no, you you shouldn't. That's data ingest. You should not. You should not track you should not do project management out of data ingest but yeah i think i think capture is important um and and i've seen people who use notebooks and and that's great in a professional setting because you're probably always going to have that around you know it's it's going to be there um i actually recently went into a tire place uh, for someone else's car luckily and, you know, I, I saw the guy on the phone, you know, is, is one guy, three phones, they're all ringing, you know, he's got papers all over the place. And I'm like, this guy has a system. Like, I guarantee you, he has a system, right? You, you don't just, you know, end up there by mistake. Well, okay, you could end up by the mistake, but like, you don't operate a successful business by mistake. So... What, you know, what, what is his kind of system? And, and he had, he had his way of making notes per, per call and being able to follow up on them. Like, I don't, I don't know where he was storing it, but you know, he, he had a, a data ingest, you know, whether it's a data ingest from a thought he had or from a customer coming in or an email that, that popped up, you know, that was, that was his data ingest and getting it out of there into somewhere. I think is the first step that you need to take right in order to track tasks as opposed to just flailing around indiscriminately. Sure. Right. However fun it can be to uh, flail, flail around, <laughs> run around like a chicken with your head cut off. A <laughs> couple good quotes. I'm going to hold on to out of that one.